Spellbinders was kind enough to send me some fun products to show you, and I'm really excited because I've been super into die cutting lately, been collecting all the dies, and um, it's just a tool that I've been pulling out more and more recently, and so I'm, I'm excited to show you this today. So I wanted to show you what they sent me first of all, and then I'm going to show you a layout that I'm going to create using the, these things. So first of all, well, let me move this stuff out of the way actually. I want to show you, this is a, a mat and it has, it's a self-healing mat. It has a cushion side for piercing things. Um, and then it also has this side, which happens to be magnetic. And I'll show you that in just a minute, which is really cool, but it's a nice work surface, especially if you're a card maker. Now I haven't been doing videos, but I have been making a lot of cards lately because my friend CJ is getting into it. So, um, that has been fun as well, but I wanted to show you the machine. So they sent me a Platinum 6 machine, and this is the same size as a lot of other standard machines out there. It fits about six inches wide. Let me tell you what I like about this one. The fact that it closes up. This takes up so much less room than my um, other die cut machine, and I really love it. So um, it's just sitting right next to my desk on the floor for now um, because I'm pulling it out over and over again. So. Um, this is the machine, and it has a nice little handle on the top, and then this is where you crank it. So just your standard stuff here, but um, it comes with, let me show you the things that the machine comes with. So I'll just set that off to the side a little bit. The machine comes with a platform, so this is like standard die cutting stuff, right? A platform, it comes with two cutting plates, which you can see I've already been using a bunch. Um, and I'm trying to keep one clean and then one for the cutting surface area. So one of these you can see has been cut into and then this one is a little bit more clean. Um, and then it also comes with an embossing plate, which this is to, um, when you're going to emboss using a die, then you use this plate plus the embossing mat um, and you can emboss with a die. And so that's really cool. So any shape, so like if I wanted to emboss a circle, this, these are just some um, Spellbinders dies that I already had, but if I wanted to, instead of cut this, if I just wanted to press the shape of a circle into the paper, I would use these two items rather than the cutting plates because I don't want it to cut. And the rubber mat gives a little, it, well, it has a little give so that it will just push the die into it rather than have it cut through the paper, if that makes sense. So it comes with all of this, which is great because um, I love that it comes with the embossing stuff because I didn't have that before, so that's fun. And then this tells you how to do a sandwich for all of your different kinds of dyes. So wafer thin dyes, which are the most, the ones that I use the most, um, embossing a, a cut shape. So that's what I was just telling you about. You can um, emboss with that and then you can use embossing folders and it shows you how to do that as well. Um, you do not need the platform if you're going to use a like a steel rule die because they already have this part built into it. Um, and I'll show you that in just a minute here. But let me show you the other couple of things that they sent to me. Um, so it, the machine came with this, I, at least I think this came with the machine. I'm not sure if they just sent it to me or if it came with the machine, but it's like a circle die and you can see like it has um, dots that it will poke out and then lines that will emboss on some of the shapes so those are really fun and then they also sent this fancy edged rectangles die I just watched a video from Nicole Spore uh, using this in a really cool way on a card she used a whole bunch of these um, and I'm going to use this on my layout today as well as the circles probably um, they also sent me some craft foam some burlap and canvas so there's you can see in the back there's uh, there's a couple of different colors in here, so there's some canvas, there's some light colored burlap, um, and then there's some darker colored burlap with the backing on it, um, and then also some foil paper. And so the foil paper you can use with any kind of die. These papers, the foam is pretty thick, and so you'll probably want to use that with a steel rule die. Uh, this also suggests using a steel rule die. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind, but you can cut thicker materials uh, if you have those steel rule dies. And sometimes you can cut thicker materials using a uh, like a wafer thin die, but 
Um, it just depends on, on the die and the intricacy, probably. Um, speaking of intricacy, they sent me this all-in-one tool, or tool-in-one tool, which is cool. I tried this out the other day for the first time, and I really loved it. So this little part is a brush, and what it does is it, um, if you have an intricately cut die, you can roll this over it and it will take out all the little pieces. It's really cool. Um, I don't have one to show you at this very second, but if I, if I do later in the video, I will show you. Um, and then this part is just a piercing tool. It, it's interchangeable. There's another tool uh, inside. Let me show you. So there's a little spatula that you can lift things out with um, if they're stuck in the die. Um, and there's the, like, a little space for you to store it in there. And then this is a piercing tool. So you can use that. I'm not exactly sure how to stick this back in now that I took it out. But uh, those are pretty cool. And I, I really like the brush especially. Um, they also sent this cool little diamond, which is actually a magnet. So if you are working with a bunch of small dies, which the other day I had some really tiny dies that I was working with. My desk is always a mess when I'm working. Um, and it was nice to just be able to go like this and kind of pick them up because it will do that. And um, if you're working with a bunch of different dies, you can kind of set it on your work surface here. And as you're kind of deciding which dies you want to use, maybe you're like, okay, I want this size. You can just kind of stick it there for safekeeping. Um, if you want to do that. And then this has a magnetic, the mat is magnetic, but just at the top. So it's a, a little magnetic sh strip. So the same thing, like if you're just working with your dies and you wanted something to just hold them in place as you're choosing them, the top of this mat um, will hold those on and you can see that they don't move. So that's kind of cool, I liked that. Um, okay, so now let me show you the other things that I have um, that are going with this machine that I probably will use today. I have a steel rule die and this one is called uh, Oopsie Daisy. I actually got this uh, on clearance at Joanne the other day but um, it just has two flowers and a leaf and I thought it would be fun to cut out some of these um, burlap pieces using that and I also have some felt that I want to try too um, for my layout and then I also have these are some Spellbinders dies that I already have that they didn't send me, but um, I'm probably going to at least use this little flower here. This is the border flower, um, and it's just a cute little cut file. I may use the, the leaf border as well as a layer behind some photos, but I'm not sure yet. So those are the things that I'm using. That is what they sent me. I'm so excited to try this out. I mean, I've tried out the machine. It works great. Um, but like I said, my favorite thing about it is the fact that this, the edges fold up because this takes up... Um, really honestly such a, a narrow footprint compared to when it's open um, that it's just really handy to keep it close to me if it's smaller so that's where I'm starting today I'm gonna go ahead and put you on fast forward if you'd like to watch the video I'll probably skip through some tedious parts um, and make this a bit of a quicker video since the intro was very long but uh, I hope that you'll stay and watch and I will leave links to all of the the uh, products that I've used today that are available in the video okay, description. Okay, before I get started, I wanted to show you where I'm, what I'm working with today. So I have these two photos of my daughter. This is the first day of school in fifth grade, and I just wanted to document a layout about um, our tradition of taking a photo in front of the door on the first day of school. And I made these paint panels of cardstock after watching Jennifer McGuire do a paint technique. I'll link to it in the video description, but basically you put um, some drops of acrylic paint and then drag like a credit card or some sort of flat edge through it just to make stripes and stuff. And so I did a whole bunch of different backgrounds just for fun. And I'm going to use, I'm going to save these ones for a card that I have in mind, but I'm going to use the more brightly colored ones probably on this layout here because they match uh, the colors of my photos nicely. So just that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to cut these into circles. And so I will show you that process. All right, so I am wanting to cut out specific parts of these papers, and so I'm just uh, putting the die where I want it and then sticking it through the machine. Now, if I wanted it to be even more precise, I could put a piece of washi tape down to make sure it doesn't move, but it's okay if it moves a little bit, in my opinion, and I do end up taping some of them down when I'm worried about that. Um, but for the most part, I'm just putting them down. You can do more than one at a time if you want to. Here's some washi tape just 
because I am doing more than one at a time and I already have a hole cut out, I just want to make sure that they don't move slightly during uh, me rolling that through there. So it, they cut out super easy. They have the prettiest little um, details around the edges, these circles. And so I am just cutting them out. So I mostly chose, I decided to just go ahead with the ones that were mostly the stripes that had the yellow, the pink, and the blue. I really liked the colors there and they match my photos. Uh, and I just think they turned out really pretty. So I do have a few of these ones that are just pinks and I'm going to cut some of these small flowers out. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I would likely use these on here. They are just the prettiest little flower and I will bring it up for a close up here in just a second because it embosses most beautifully. And I'm just using the all-in-one tool to poke that out there. And look how cute this is. I slowed it down so you could look at the details for a second, but it's just so cute. So I cut out a few of these uh, flowers and actually they don't end up making it onto the layout, which is kind of sad, but uh, you'll see why here in just a little bit. But I'm going to save these for a card or future layout because they are super cute. So they're just now sitting in a little pile on the top of my desk. But what I'm doing is just trying to cut out of three different areas of that paint uh, so that I can have it so I have one that's mostly lighter pink, one that's mostly purple, and then one kind of in the middle. And I think they're so cute. I just can't even help myself. There they are again. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, so, and I love the paint is a little bit shiny, so it worked really well. I used some Bria Reese paints. I got those at Hobby Lobby, um, and they're acrylic paints, and they're pretty nice. So here I am trying to decide what I'm going to do. I have all of my dies stuck to the top of that little Spellbinders uh, mat. And I am just going to, I, I start with the mat thinking that I can, I can work on it. I really think the mat is meant for card makers because it's a little bit smaller, but I will use it for a minute here. So I'm kind of arranging my flower or my flowers, my circles, trying to decide what I want to use. And I decide that the, the kit that I made in a, in my use it or lose it series, uh, I'll link to that video in the description, it's gonna work perfectly for this. So I am using that kit uh, and these circles that I created to finish this layout and to embellish it and stuff. And these letter stickers, I had not put in the kit, but they're just new sitting in my stash and so I wanted to uh, use them. They kind of fade from a pink to a white and they're from Studio Calico. And I am just spelling out the word tradition right now on some wax paper. I like to do my titles on wax paper because then I can move it around and decide where it looks best before actually committing to it. I remembered that I had this pretty little studio piece of transparency and it's just eight by eight and it's so cute and it has a lot of the same colors that are in here, but it also has green. So I'm not loving the green. I'm going to cut it off. Uh, and you'll see that in a minute here. But I just like the little bit of interest it adds to the background. I thought about doing some mixed media in the background, but because the circles are so painty, <laughs> I decided that I didn't need more than that. I wanted that to be really the focus. And so I'm just putting that piece of transparency and it gives just enough interest. So now I've pulled out the fancy rectangle dies and I'm thinking of creating a photo mat for my photo. So I have a three by four photo and this uh, rectangle die that I'm using now just on some white cardstock it punches out or it cuts out a, a rectangle but then it has like a faux stitched edge and it's really nice I thought I would be using more of those rectangles actually but um, this was all I ended up needing and I felt like it it was just enough it's just that simple little interest that um, gives a little something extra to the layout but it doesn't call attention to itself, which I love those little kind of details. They're the kind of things you notice if you're looking closely, uh, which I do. <laughs> and so I cut my picture down just a tiny bit so it would fit more within that rectangle. And now what I'm doing is I'm trying to find some, oh, I, I'm pulling out the canvas. And what I want to do is cut the canvas with that steel rule die that cuts the it's oopsie daisy and it cuts flowers and it ends up so cute. So you can see it cuts right through them. Uh, and I have two flowers and a leaf shape. And I'm just using the leftover piece to cut out another small flower. And you can see I don't need my platform for that because the steel rule die has that built into it. 
And so I cut out two of the smaller flowers and one of the larger ones. And now I'm cutting some of that little floral wreath thingy, the square uh, of leaves out in some vellum. And I thought that would be nice in my layers as well. Uh, behind my photo just something subtle again it's just going to add detail it's not going to take away from those circles or from the photo um, I'm just trying to add a little bit of added added interest I'm adding a little interest <laughs> and so uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking now so I'm cutting them up trying to think about if I can put them on around the whole thing or just on the corners or what I'm what I'm wanting to do and again these don't make it onto the layout I think they could have worked but they just felt like they were just a little bit too much on this layout. But I like the idea of, of cutting leaves and things out of vellum just for a little bit of a subtle detail. So I'm going to pop my photo up on some foam and I just put that behind that little photo mat that I created with the rectangle. And now I'm playing again with those little vellum leaves. Um, I'm going to put my my circles back down just so I can remember how I had arranged it and you've probably noticed by now I decided to take out the other photo um, because I'm talking about a tradition that is ours uh, and the other photo had my daughter's friend in it and so I just decided that she didn't need to be on there and the the layout design worked better with one photo anyway so I, I was able to tell my story uh, in a good enough way that made me happy with just the one photo. So here I'm kind of playing around with the flowers trying to decide should I put a flower on each of these circles and dot those around? What should I do with the smaller flowers? Are they just a smaller embellishment? I couldn't decide. So when I don't know what to do I move on to something else and what I decided to do was put some washi tape down and I really love that the washi tape that I chose for this kit which is by the way I think from Amy Tangerine's very first kit with American Crafts years ago, um, but it has a ruler on it, and that just reminds you of school, right, especially in the yellow, and so I thought that was perfect for this layout. So I'm going to go ahead and get my circles glued down so that they are, uh, I, I have my design already kind of figured out that way, so since I know for sure that those circles are going to go where I'm putting them, I might as well stick them down, and I like the idea of my photo kind of overlapping several of the circles it helps bring everything together so here I'm coming back to the title and I'm trying to decide if I want to put it on that big circle or if I'm going to put it to the right of the photo or what and I decide to go ahead and put it to the right of the photo and add a couple of words so I'm doing first day tradition as my title and the D's had a bit of a long tail on them so I decided to cut cut the D's down a little bit uh, just some a personal choice but um, I will have those resting on top of the word tradition. And it, again, I'm playing with around with how I want to do these canvas flowers. Now, the in the circle dies that I'm using, there is a, a really small one. And I thought it would be cute for a center for the flowers. And so I will end up bringing that back in in a little bit. But first, I am pulling out these super old basic gray stickers that I have in my stash kit and I'm just putting some foam behind them. The colors of these matched really well and I thought they brought a little bit of a fun whimsical element and I liked the black that they add in the photo. The, the trim around my door is black and so I liked being able to add in just a little bit of black with these birds as well. So right now I have three of them and in the end I decide that three of those birds on this layout is overkill because I have, like I mentioned I ha before, I have my paint circles is what I really want to focus on and I don't want to take away from that so I will actually end up only putting one of those birds on. I pulled out the houses and I pulled out my stamps and I pulled out my enamel dots to see if they were something I wanted to try to add to this layout as well and I decide to add some of those things so I'm putting my photo down and then I am thinking about the birds kind of moving them around trying to decide where I'm going to put them. I was so indecisive. Then I thought, okay, fine, I'll do the center of the flowers on it. So I ended up cutting one of those small circles out of the gold poster board. And it looks really cool, but I don't use it because maybe you saw it in the very first photo at the beginning of the video that I end up coloring my flowers yellow. And the gold on top of the yellow just wasn't enough contrast for what I wanted. And so I will end up not doing that. I'm looking through my spray mist to decide if I want to use a spray mist to color the canvas. And then I remembered that in my 
kit that I created, I have Distress Oxide and it's fossilized amber. So that color will work well for this. So I'm just going ahead and kind of, I'm moving my whole table as you can see the shaking right now, but I'm basically just pushing the ink onto it. I'm not rubbing it, I'm just pressing the ink down into those flowers. And so I layered two up on that on that center one, or on the one that I'm working on now, but I will end up adding some other flowers around uh, instead of just having the one. So at this point I'm thinking, do I want a brad in the center because I didn't like the gold and I wasn't sure, so I decide to get my title down. And you can kind of see at the top, I've started playing around with the idea of doing um, one of the colorful circles in the center of the flowers. And that kind of helps them tie into the flowers so that they're just an extension of that embellishment rather than a whole other thing even though I mean they're flowers and they're a whole other thing but I just I think it it works nicely to have those uh, flowers centers matching the circle the other circles on the layout so what I'm going to do now is cut out a few more of those flowers and ink a few more of those flowers and I'm going to put some glue dots down to Hold these in place and as I mentioned I layered two together for this this first flower the one above my title um, I pulled a little bit on the canvas and it came one of the petals came off and so I just glued it down no big deal and I'm just choosing a center and putting that on there and then I'm going to decide to do some more so here I am just putting the ink on shaking the whole table sorry sorry about that um, so here's the second one and then um, I decide to just go ahead with the one bird next to my title so it's kind of pointing to my title and I think he looks cute and here's my second flower and I've got the center in it as well fixing my title a little little bit that a little little bit <laughs> sorry my tongue is not working my my voice my words oh boy Okay, anyway, <laughs> now I'm putting down some enamel dots and I'm using up all of the turquoise ones. I think they look super cute. I love the way they look dotted around here. So I'll put some around the title and I'm gonna put some up there at the top and that's where I'm gonna put my journaling. So I wanted them to be close to those two areas, the title and journaling, because after your eye takes in everything else, I want it to go there. So at this point I'm trying to decide if I want to add in anything else from the sticker sheet and there are these cute little hearts and they have a black outline which I wanted to bring more of that in because of the bird so I do add three little hearts and here I've this is where I'm deciding I need one more flower so I just cut the whole sheet out again and I have this small flower that I can use and that way I have three of them which makes me happy so I'm just trying to uh, get this all yellow inked up and here you can see it inked up now my video stopped for a minute so I'm coming back here but you can see that I glued those down uh, and I'm putting centers on each one of them and before I uh, finish this up I I ripped the edges on three sides of the paper and just put a little bit of paper behind them that came from the kit I had created it's a little striped pattern and that's an old Dear Lizzie paper, but it matched perfectly. And what I'm doing now is taking my pen and just scribbling some little doodles. And I'm adding them in around the embellishments. And this is just going to bring another element of whimsy and the black into another area. So this is something I've been doing a lot kind of lately. Just a, some, are, some bigger scribbly dots and some just like, um, just like a single little pen dot and um, just dotting those around. So... I really like doing that and here I've got my journaling typed up I've been using my we are memory keepers typecast typewriter to do that lately as well and so I'm just cutting those into strips and then as I mentioned before I will put my journaling kind of up on that top circle um, but I don't want to cover it all up so I'm starting it about halfway down the circle and you can see I'm just making the the lines bounce back and forth so they don't all end up on one like all aligned I didn't want that and so um, I want them to kind of end right at the photo so I will start gluing those from the bottom up just to make sure I have the room that I want and I always do it that way like I I try to nestle things in you guys if you are new to my channel you will hear me say the word nestle a lot apparently I didn't know that until people started pointing it out to me but I do I say the word nestle a lot because I think it's really important to 
for me to make my layouts look cohesive by by nestling things together so uh it's it's my thing it's what i do so i am checking to see if i want to add any of those little houses but i decide against it and here i'm kind of going back again to the birds and saying do i want the birds and i don't want the birds so i put them back and uh, i did decide to add in for one more pop of black these little chipboard text printed hearts from studio calico and those are really old too again that those are from my stash kit that i created for my use it or lose it series and um just adding a few more of those kind of doodly dots in and i do use my adhesive um scotch quick dry adhesive to add a little bit to the back of my uh, enamel dots because they're on plastic so they don't stick as well um, at this point, I was trying to just kind of figure out the last details. What else do I want to add? Do I even want to add anything? And I remembered that I had some die cuts that had some nice purples and blacks in, in there. That These are from Kaiser Craft. And they had some little flowers in there. And I thought it might be fun to tuck in another pop of black into each little floral cluster. And I really love the way that these flowers look on here. They just bring a little bit more drama, I guess. Um, and they really draw the eye and I like I like the element of black it's like they say in like when you're decorating you can throw a little bit of black into each room I kind of feel the same way about layouts you can throw a little black on each layout um, I don't always do it but I think it always looks nice so uh, I'm just kind of tucking them behind the other the bigger flowers and I'm just going to use a smaller flower next to the big one and that's pretty much going to complete the layout so I hope that you've enjoyed this I hope that you'll check uh, these products out. I really, really am loving my Spellbinders machine. Here I'm just stamping the date on. I'm using Stays On because I am stamping on plastic or that acetate sheet, but um, I'm loving dies lately, so I'm excited to be playing around with them. You'll see them in videos, I'm sure, many videos coming up. So here are some close-up photos. I've left links again to uh, all of the available products in the video description. So thanks so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, give yourself a pat on the back. It was a long one. If you don't subscribe already, go ahead and hit that button so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And we'll see you again very, very soon.